Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. Welcome to the website. It's WayneD.com. And I've been wanting to do this video for a while. A bunch of swings that uh, Mac O'Grady made throughout the years popped up on the YouTube. And they're just so nice. And demonstrate one of the things that I've always want, liked to teach. And that would be what I would call the the magic move in transition when you watch from down the line. When you watch Max grip handle move toward the ball and the shaft flatten back. And I like think that's just awesome. Now Mac is pretty famous for being somewhat eccentric and I'm sure if he watched this he would insist that I don't know what I'm talking about but again I'm just observing uh, what's happening here so in my mind what I see happening is that the upper right arm is going to adduct meaning it's going to move forward and downward the right forearm is going to supinate, which it already is doing, which means moving in a clockwise fashion, which obviously if that, if that forearm rotates this way, it's going to kick the shaft this way. And that is going to drive the right shoulder into more of an external rotated, externally rotated situation where it's moving in front of him and at the beginning of the downswing we're going to see the left arm is going to maintain some pronation right here and resist supination for a little bit and then as we get moving forward the right forearm supination is going to reverse to pronation and the left forearm is going to supinate and start to add flexion to the left wrist which flattens the wrist and as you can see that whole motion is going to take the right arm and put it nicely in front of the hip and give the right arm a ton of space and look how nicely the club is on the hands, perfect. Max lower body rotations, a little slower than some. You see a lot of guys with their left leg gone by this point in the swing, by a P5. He's a little more, five and a half. But it doesn't get much better than this. So one thing I think that he won't be averse to as being compared to some of the some of the great players who have done the same thing. So let me go through a couple of uh, of guys that I've always liked to watch. Uh, the first one being Ben Hogan. So we're going to watch Hogan from the top. And what I've always seen here is the the same thing that we just saw with Mac. Kind of forgot. There's the ball. So we take Hogan up, start him down, and we see the same thing. You see the shaft. Club head is usually kicking back, and the grip is traveling for a little bit right on that high line. Look at Mac swing again. And again, Hogan, right arm free, plenty of room, elbow in front of the hip, right arm bent at impact. Very nice. Now from Hogan, you can move to the, the number one female player in the world, and that would be Danielle Kang. Let's take a look at what she's up to at the top of her swing with this driver swing.
there it is pretty close to exactly the same movement here and once again you can see the grip handle moving toward the ball this camera angle is not perfect but you can see the club shallow back So when the camera angles a little bit out toward the ball, the handle won't appear to be moving as much toward the toward the ball, but you know that if you were situated with the camera more over by the hands, then that shaft action there would be just about what Mac is up to over here. So let's move along to another another player. I think everyone would agree that uh, George Knudsen get a better view of that one here had a great golf swing, a great ball striker. This picture, this swing is not in the greatest visually but watch the watch the move here ooh that's a nice one there so how about my little Brooks Kepka here. I knew I would do that eventually. Again, you got the handle going at the ball, you got the right arm. In Kepka's case, already externally rotated in front of him, but watch the motion. Tremendous clearance. Right arm with tons of room. Let's see if I can get back to that O'Grady picture. There we go. So here's one that I like to I show people I have, probably haven't seen. They haven't seen too much. This is Bruce Litsky. Take a look at that action. So he's really going to take that right arm and drive it forward here and get that elbow in front. Of course, Litsky always took it a little behind him, a little across, and then he fixed it up. And from there, hit a nice fade. So you can see the left wrist flexion coming down, but that outward handle movement with the right arm driving. Beautiful. go to another famous old timer How about a little a little Byron Nelson there's another one Hard to see at regular speed, but then when you slow it down, it's pretty obvious what's going on there. Here's a more recent player. We'll look at the uh, swing of Joaquin Neiman. Another 
nice action there. Same thing from the top. Oops. Sam Sneed action. Let's take a look at let's take a look at Sam. A little later swing back in the the Hogan Sneed match. I think that was sixty two or three. Real close to Mac. And then last but not least, let's go to Tiger Woods in 2003. Now Tiger is not going to have the same kind of shaft kickback, but just had to throw him in there because that right arm is really in front of him and watch the watch the handle. Now this changed after he worked with Hank Haney for a little while. The hands began to drop straight down. But this was Tiger. And if you look at him from two thousand to two thousand and three or four, it's gonna look just like that. Beautiful. So again, Mac might disagree with my uh, explanation of that, but I don't think he would mind me comparing him to that array of players all doing similar things at the top of the swing. And certainly Mac's contributed quite a bit to instruction in general. And he might be called the man who knew too much, so... One of these days, maybe he'll write himself a, a book, and we'd all be interested in reading it. All right, Wayne D. here. Thanks for watching.